stand up so that we can read God's word together. Uh, we're going to begin to read from verse 27. And because of time, I'll begin to read uh, Genesis 11, uh, verse 27. Uh, this is the genealogy of terror. This is the genealogy of terror. Uh, in some cases, especially in the old King James, it will say this is the generation. But uh, genealogy, generation, uh, the key word there is the word gene. Somebody say gene, gene, gene. Yeah, you know, that's what you transfer from uh, one person to the other. It talks about DNA. Okay, this is the genealogy of Terah. Now, Terah begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Haran begot Lot, and Haran died before his father, Terah, in his native land, in all of the Chaldeans. Verse 29. Uh, then Abram and Nahor took wives. Uh, the name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of uh, Nahor's wife, Milcah, uh, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Iscah. Uh, but Sarah uh, was barren. She had no child. Verse 31. Uh, and Terah took his son, Abraham. Please Please underline, highlight, if you will, verse 31. And Terah, uh, Abraham's father now, took his son Abraham and his grandson Lot, uh, the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarah, his son Abraham's wife, and they went out with them from all of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan. Hmm. They, they, they began a journey to go to the land of Canaan. And they came to Haran and dwelt there. And so the days of Terah were 205 years. And Terah, Abraham's father, died in Haran. Chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, Get out of your country from your family and from your father's house. To a land that I will show you and make you a great nation, I will bless you. And make your name great, and you shall be a blessing, Abraham. I bless those who bless you, and I curse him who curses you. And in you, Abraham, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Verse 4. And so Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. God bless his word this morning in Jesus' name. Please be seated this morning uh, while I read from just Joshua chapter 24 uh, from verse 2. Joshua 24 uh, verse 2. Joshua 24 verse 2. Just going to lay some uh, very important foundations as we begin this uh, incredible journey uh, in the word of God uh, this year. Uh, I read, uh, thank you Holy Spirit, Joshua chapter 24 verse 2. And Joshua said to all the people, thus says the Lord God of Israel, uh, your fathers, including Terah, your fathers, including Terah, the father of Abraham and the father of Nahor dwelt on the other side of, of the river in old times and they served the Lord God's verse 3. And then I took your father Abraham from the other side of the river, led him through all the land of Canaan and multiplied his descendants and gave him Isaac verse 4. Uh, to Isaac, I gave Jacob and Esau. To Esau, I gave the mountains of Seir to possess. But uh, Jacob and his children went down to Egypt, verse 5. Also, I sent Moses and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt according to what I did among them. Afterward, I brought you out, verse 6. Then I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued your fathers with chariots and horsemen out to the rest of verse 7. So they cried out to the Lord, and he put darkness between you and the Egyptians, brought the sea upon them, and cover them, and your eyes saw what I did in Egypt. Then you dwelt. I wish we had the time. Please, when you go home, uh, read the entire chapter 24. Awesome, awesome history uh, of the children of Israel. I, I want to begin this morning uh, to say that the moment God gave us that word from Genesis about Abraham, I knew that God was beginning an incredible thing in our lives this year. Uh, not only um, as a church, but as individuals. Uh, because anytime God begins to talk to you about Abraham, it means that there's a great and a mighty thing that God is set to do in our lives. And you're going to see it as we uh, continue this journey this year. Uh, but today we're going to lay some very important foundation. And I pray this Sunday morning that God will speak to you directly in the name of Jesus. Okay, let me begin by saying uh, that, that we have a God uh, 
who is on a journey of purpose on the earth. We, we have a God who is on a journey of purpose on the earth. And, and that journey uh, begins, uh, or rather began from Genesis chapter 1, uh, when he created Adam and Eve. Um, and we see certain things that God began to say to Adam and Eve uh, from verse 26 to 28 of Genesis chapter 1. And we see that journey continues all the way to the book of uh, Revelations. By, by uh, next Sunday, we're going to be looking at... Uh, um, particularly, we'll look at uh, a bit about, at, uh, at Adam and Eve, and we'll look at the man Noah, and then we also, uh, you know, we'll, we'll come back to Abraham. Uh, so please make sure um, you're in church next Sunday. But today, we'll, we'll, we'll look at something different. Make sure you're here in church on Sunday. Uh, what, is, what is the common thing between, uh, what, is, what is common between um, Adam and Eve and, and Noah and Abraham? Now, I began to say that God is on a journey of purpose on the earth. Now, one of the things you must know about God is that God is a God of purpose. Let me tell your neighbor, God is a God of purpose. Okay, that means that God is very deliberate. God is very intentional. God is not random. God, nothing just happens with God. Everything that God does, there's a reason why he does it. And that God is a God of purpose. Now, understanding how God is, knowing how God operates, is good for you. Because the more of God you understand, the more of God you can appropriate in your life. Somebody say hallelujah. Okay, I'm going to say that again. The more of God you understand, the more of God, the way you know God works and deals, then the more power, the more of God will be seen in your life. Somebody say hallelujah. I believe it's Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. Uh, can, we, can we see that uh, media? Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. Uh, so, so you understand what I'm saying. Daniel 11 32. Daniel 11 32. Can we read together now? Those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. Go on now, church. Let's read together. The more of God you know, the stronger you are. The more of God, the more you understand how God works, the more you understand how God operates, then the more of him will be seen in your life. And that's why nobody should encourage you to come to church or to read the Bible. It's good for you. Is somebody here. The more of God you know, the more of God you understand, the stronger you are. The Bible says that they that know their God, they shall be what? Strong and they shall do what? Anybody I want to do exploits in this life? Somebody say hallelujah. Okay, so one way to understand how God operates is that God has been on a journey of purpose from Genesis, from um, Abraham, sorry, from um, Adam, all the way to Noah, and then to Abraham, all the way, all the way down to the book of Revelation. Now, God is a transgenerational God. God is what? A transgenerational God. That means that he's a God that goes from generation to generation to generation. And that's why he introduced himself uh, to Moses. You know, you know when Moses said, who are you? One of the things he said, I'm the, say, I'm the God of your father. I'm the God of what? Abraham. I'm the God of what? Isaac. I'm the God of what? Jacob. Hallelujah. I'm the God of Abraham. I'm the God of Isaac. I'm the God of Jacob. Now, God is a long-term planner. Is somebody here this Sunday? God is what? Okay, you see, everything I'm saying this Sunday is important to you. God is what? A long-term planner. Now, you must understand that God will not die at 100 years. The Bible records in the book of Daniel that he is the ancient of days. The Bible calls him the ageless one. Okay, what that means is this. When you work with God, you have to learn to be patient. The old, I mean, the late pastor and I used to say that God is like an old man. <laughs> when you talk with old men, they are not in a hurry. Have you ever spoken with an old man before? You know, sometimes my father calls me. He's 86 this year now. And he takes his time. 
He's not in a hurry to go anywhere. Sometimes he says, I just got to greet you by talking for 30. I said, Daddy, I have other things to do. And so, if you have a walk with God, I want to please beg you. That's why the Bible says that you will inherit your promises through faith. And what? And patience. Because God does not just deal with today. God is not a short-term God. And that's why I want to speak to our church and say, look, what is happening in Nigeria? Four years, eight years is nothing in the end. We are all fuzzled. We are all agitated. Four years, eight years is nothing in the history of a nation. And so you may be agitated, but God is not. Because the plans that God has for Nigeria is not an eight-year plan. If somebody in church this Sunday, the plan that God has for Nigeria is not even a hundred-year plan. You know, the, the America that we look at today, how old is America? The examples we are looking at, do you know how old those nations are? And so there's a prophetic purpose for our country. There's a plan for our country. And so let's not all begin to get all worked up because what looks like the short term doesn't look like what we want to see. I want to say to you that God has a prophetic purpose. We need to be patient to see it. And I want to say to somebody who came to church this morning, uh, the last one or two years in your life may not have looked okay, but there's a long-term plan that God has for your life in the name of Jesus. I want to say to you there was a season in my wife, in, in our life, when it looks like God has left us. But you see, God is not done with you. The fact that you're today or you're yesterday doesn't look like what you want to see. I've come to say to you that the plan of God for your life is a long-term plan. Oh, maybe the only type of people that came to church this Sunday. Yes, I know we want it now. Yes, I know we want to see it now. But if God has a purpose for life, it's a long-term plan. And so we see God begin this journey of purpose with a man and a woman called Adam and Eve. It's a journey of purpose. But what exactly is this purpose of God? A number of them. The purpose of God is that his kingdom will come on the earth. Somebody say his kingdom will come on the earth. Come on now. I say his kingdom will come on the earth. One purpose of God is that his kingdom will come on the earth. His kingdom will come in Nigeria. His kingdom, his kingdom will come in Abuja. Somebody shout hallelujah. And that's why Jesus Christ teaching us how to pray. He said pray like this. He said let your kingdom come. One purpose of God is that the earth, the whole earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. Just like as the waters covers the sea. That is the purpose of God. That your office uh, is a hallelujah. That your neighborhood, uh, that all of the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 14. Somebody said that's the purpose of God. That's the purpose of God. A purpose of God we see it in Revelation chapter 11. And for me, it's, it's the last book of the Bible. The Bible says that the kingdoms of this world, they will become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ. And he, and he shall what? He shall reign forever. I want to say to you that when it's all said and done, every kingdom in, in the world, the kingdoms of Nigeria, the kingdoms of America, the kingdoms of Israel, they shall become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ and his what? He shall reign forever. All these purposes of God, God began from Adam and Eve. And it's important that we align ourselves with those purposes. If you want to find fulfillment in life, locate the purpose of God. If you want to, if you want to find greatness in life, align yourself with what? The purpose of God. The purpose of God. And so if God is a long-term planner and God is a transgenerational God, if God is not just a short-term God, then it's important that you know that most likely... What God is doing in your life today didn't just begin with you. When, when, we, got, when we saw Abraham, many of us begin, uh, usually we begin to read from Genesis chapter 12. But, but Pastor Wale, the dealings of God with Abraham didn't start in Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. You may not know this, but the dealings of God with you, didn't start with you. Mm. 
The Bible records that Abraham's father, his name was Terah. Somebody say Terah. Okay? Abraham's uh, father's name was Terah. Now, there are Jewish historians who have told us certain things about Terah, but because it's not in the Bible, I'm not permitted to teach what they have said. So, I will stay with what the Bible says. Is somebody here? I will stay with what the Bible says. Okay? There are things that have been said. One of the things that was said about Abraham's father by Jewish historians was that Abraham's father was uh, one person who made idols. He was an idol maker. Okay? Idol as in I-D-O-L. Carved images. Now, before Abraham, the world served many gods. I hope you know that. Okay? It was a polytheist world. That means they didn't know one god. They knew many gods. And it was believed that Abraham's father uh, uh, made idols or made the images. He was a sculptor, as it were. But it's not in the Bible. Somebody says it's not in the Bible. Okay? But, but what is in the Bible is what we're going to say this morning. And that's what's going to bless you. It's interesting that in verse 37, Bible begins to record that Abraham's father left all of the Chaldeans. And began to go on a journey to Canaan land. Let me preach it to you, sir. Awesome scripture. Bible records that Abraham's father, Terah, took his son, Abraham, took Lot, his grandson, took Abraham's wife, Sarah, on a journey to where? He has a... So the question is, how did he know about Canaan? So I don't know whether it was an idol maker that eventually had an encounter with God. So maybe the first person that was called wasn't Abraham. It was his father. Oh, stay with pastor this morning. So God spoke to the man. He had an encounter with God. God's plan originally was with terror. And so God began a walk with terror. So say, there's a place I'm taking you to. For Minister Chinedu. I don't know what happened to Terah. But he got to Haran. Midway. Between where God has told him to go. And he stopped there. He didn't go further. And God began to say to me. That many of us who are here. Some of the things. That you are dealing with now. Uh, things that God has said to your father. Things God had said to your father. But your father got midway and stopped. He died there. He died in Haran. I, I can remember at a certain point in my life at home growing up. I knew when my father stopped. Even though I was young. I could see that there was something greater. I could see there was something bigger. But some force greater than my father stopped him. And I used to remember telling my father. I said you can push more. Even in secondary. I said I, daddy I know that there is a greater potential. But there was something that stopped him. I want to say to you this Sunday. Uh, that thing that stopped your father. It will stop you in the name of Jesus. That thing that is your home and in your household. That thing that your, your father could not overcome. In the name that is above every name. In the name of Jesus. It will stop you in the name of Jesus. You see the older I become. The more I begin to see. That even though we are Christians carrying uh, the gene of Christ. There are certain patterns in our bloodline that are there. Oh no, I can tell you that for sure. In fact, as I see my children grow, I can see that there are certain things in bloodlines. You see, one of the biggest problems in, in, in this life is that the issues that you're dealing with, when it crosses over to your children, it multiplies. Oh, is that? That's why this year, you must break it in your own life. You see, because I've noticed that when he moves over to the next generation, he becomes stronger. Terah 
had three sons. One died. He had two. When he came to Abraham, he couldn't even have. You see, the plan of God is that we go from strength to strength. But th th there's, a, there's a familiar spirit that locates the purposes that is in your bloodline. And that spirit attempts to stop you and your bloodline from making progress. But because of this word that God, God has given to us, it dies in the name of Jesus. That matter dies in the name of Jesus. That issue dies in the name of Jesus. I want to say to you uh, that whatever your father couldn't cross over, you will cross over it in the name of Jesus. Whatever your mother couldn't cross over, you will cross over it in the name of Jesus. Where your father stopped halfway, you will finish in the name of Jesus. Can you stand up? I want us to just take about a minute and pray and declare over your life uh, that you will cross over whatever is in your blood line that has held you down that is attempting to hold you down every containment every limitation everything in your family line that is attempting to hold you down come on begin to declare say i will finish i will finish i will finish i will finish my cause i will fulfill my purpose whatever held my father down the power is the power is broken broken. I will cross over. I will not stop at Haran. I will not stop at Haran. I'm crossing over. I will not stop at the middle point. I am crossing over. I am crossing over. I am crossing over. I am crossing over. If, you, if you're here and there's a health situation that is in your bloodline, you will cross over it in the name of Jesus. If there's something that you've inherited from your father or your mother, I declare in the name of Jesus, something that killed your father or something that killed your mother, you will cross over it in the name of Jesus. You will cross over. You will cross over. Please be seated. You say, Pastor, come on, prove from the word of God. Show us more. Now, those of you who are familiar with scripture, you, you, you will realize uh, that there are certain patterns in the life of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We don't have the time to go deeply into it. There were character issues that were there. Character issues that were there. And sometimes, parents, I'm sure you can see many times a lot of yourself in your children. Is that so? Are there any parents here? If you're truly the parents of your children, is somebody here? Sometimes you see a weakness in you when it comes to your child, it's greater. The weakness gets actually multiplied. If you're lazy, you see your, one of your children will be very lazy. It's in the blood. It increases. It increases. There are certain traits you have. It may not be all your children, but look at them. Just the fact that they came from you. Unfortunately, the thing increases. And please, we're going to pray another prayer this Sunday. We're going to say another prayer this Sunday. Abraham, we found out, became a liar. Yeah? Lied as they were going into Egypt. Lied to Ahimelech. When his son came into that same situation, he lied the same lie. By the time he came to Jacob, his name he actually became a lie. Is somebody here? Is it so? Jacob means liar. The thing was increasing from generation. I pray again in the name of Jesus. Anything that is negative in your bloodline. Ah, my father. You will not carry it over in the name of Jesus. I say anything that is not good. Any character issue. Your children will not carry it. It's the grace of God. That, that just because they were carrying covenant, that nullified, he would have been in trouble. They would have been in trouble. It was grace and covenant that delivered them. The thing kept on multiplying. Oh, Jesus. There are some of you, your parents didn't attain any level of success in life. And that's why the devil is fighting you the way he's fighting you. Say, so who be you? Who born you? What, 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 you, you want to become what? 
Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Mahazia. I want to declare to you that you carry a generational blessing. Come on, somebody open your mouth and say, I carry a generational blessing. Come and say, Abraham is my father. I carry a generational blessing. I'm not under any cause. I'm not under any limitation. I carry the blessing of Abraham. Somebody shout hallelujah this Sunday. There are two things I want you to do this year. The first one is that you need to consciously break everything from your behind. Your father. That it looks like it's containing your life. You need to break it consciously. Is somebody here? Anything you see in your father or your mother. And you don't want to see it in your... And you can, you're already seeing it. Break it. Listen. You say, Pastor. Are we not New Testament believers? Remember that every promise of God. Every promise of God in the New Covenant. They are what we call their positional. Okay, what does that mean? Positional means that it is available. But you need to take it by force. Okay? Every promise under the new covenant is what? Positional, available. But you need to do what? You can't just say, well, this is what God has said. You need to work out your salvation with what? Fear and... The devil you're dealing with is not joking with you. The things you're dealing with, they're not small things. So you just be sleepy and say, well, I will cross over. No. Somebody shout Hallelujah. So you're going to break it. The moment I began to see a particular pattern begin to play out, and every time I began to find myself to begin to get into a new dimension, the battle becomes strong. Why? Because you want to do better than your father? You say to the devil, yes. The second thing I want to say to somebody this Sunday, I said, deal with where you're coming from. But probably more importantly, I want you to begin to speak into the lives of your children. Did somebody hear this Sunday? I want you to do what? May it not be that you are the one who is great. Your children are nothing. Have you ever seen many times that you, peep, you see people whose parents are great and their children are nothing? How many Man of Mandela's children do you hear of? Do you know any of their children? Have you heard any other Mandela? Can you, do you know how great Mandela was? You think that's the will of God? You think that's the will of God? Let's look at Psalm 112 from verse 1. Psalm 112. Psalm 112 from verse 1. We'll look at 1 and 2. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Psalm 112, media quickly now. Psalm verse 1. Okay, can we do it together now? Praise the Lord. Blessed is he who fears the Lord. Who does what? Now let's go to verse 2. His descendants. Now go to verse 1 so we see who God is talking to there. Go, to back, go back to verse 1. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man or the woman who does what? Who delights greatly in his... So he's talking to us. Verse 2. What does he say? His descendants will be what? Mighty. Go to King James. King James. The old King James. The old King James. KJV. KJV. This is verse 2. KJV. Verse 2. Quickly now, media. Ma media, please help me today. KJV verse 2. Yeah? Old King James, what's going on? Help me now. What? What did you see? Shall be what? Can you lift up your right hand this Sunday morning? I want you to declare that my seed, anything that will come out of me, and anything that has come out of me, they shall be mighty upon the earth. My children shall be mighty. Come on, if you, if you, I know some of you have five children. You may not be able to call all of their names now, but you want to call the names of your children and say, Emmanuel Monye, it shall be mighty upon the earth. If Monye, it shall not be small. It shall be mighty. It shall be mighty. It shall be mighty. My seeds, whatever comes out of me, they shall be mighty upon the earth. Your children shall be greater than you. 
I say your children shall be greater than you. The seeds that come out of your body, they shall be greater than you in the name of Jesus. You will, you will live to see the greatness of your children. I say our world will hear about your children. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now let me tell you this church. It doesn't matter how old your children are. And it doesn't matter how young your children are. I want to say to your young children. Uh, the seed of the mighty shall be uh, the seed of the just shall be mighty upon the earth. And it doesn't matter whether your children are 35 or 40. Your children shall be mighty upon the earth. Shout hallelujah. I like the way the, the, the uh, New Living Translation says it. I don't know if we have that. NLT, NLT, New Living Translation. Quickly, NLT, do they have it? New Living Translation, do they have it? New Living Translation, the same Psalm 112 verse 2. Quickly now. Pastor, Pastor Wally, do you have it? Can, can we read together? I want to go. I choose to believe the word of God. Somebody say, I choose to believe the word of God. I say, I choose to believe the word of God. It doesn't matter whether your children don't look like it now. But we choose to believe the word of God. And we declare the word of God over our children in the name of Jesus. Now, if you're single here, you're normally put your hand in your, in your stomach. And say, when my children come, they shall be mighty upon the earth. My children shall be successful. I will not have ordinary children. Come on, declare that. Declare that. Declare that. So what God begins from Abraham, he continues with Isaac. And what God begins with Isaac, he continues with Jacob. And what he begins with Jacob, he continues with Judah. I wish we had the time, Pastor Nyema. The truth is that God is in a journey of purpose. Everything you see happening on the earth right now with God, there's a purpose. A wise person locates that purpose. Ay, ay, ay. A wise person does what? You locate that purpose and you come into alignment. Let me use you again. Sir. You come into alignment with that purpose. It would have been foolish if Isaac, if Isaac, who knew his father was carrying purpose, he didn't bring himself into alignment with that purpose. Do you know what disqualified Esau? Do you know? Esau was a carnal man. Fleshly. He knew his grandfather was loaded with purpose. He knew his own father Isaac was loaded with what? Purpose. But he sold his birthright for food. I want to talk to you this Sunday. Don't just live here for existence, for survival. Say, Pastor, I'm talking about rent and children's school fees. You're talking about purpose. The biggest mistake you will make is to let all of your life here be about what to eat. Is God not conscious of what you're going to eat? He is. But God is looking for somebody who doesn't carry an Esau spirit. Sir, all Esau wanted, he said, what is this birthright? And as I'm speaking, he's only saying, Pastor, change the message. It's the same Esau spirit. He said, I'm hungry and you're talking to me. And so many of you may not be happy with Jacob. But Jacob understood purpose. He knew there was something. He knew there was something. <laughs> he knew there was something. So he said to the guy, because, you see, by, by nature, Esau was older. So he knew that the thing should jump on Esau. He said, oh boy, I will give you this food to eat too. But can you give me your bed right? There's a purpose of God. That's why you're here. That's why you're here. That's why you didn't die in that accident. 
Are you here? That's why the experiences that you have gone through, none of it was by accident. The schools that you went to, the relationships that you have, you have gone through, none of it was by accident. The uniqueness of your journey, none of it was by accident. So listen, as I grow older, I find that every, every road God has taken me through is because there's a purpose. You think God is just keeping you so you can be eating in your and, 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 and found the arm. There's a greater purpose. There's a greater purpose. You, 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 you think that you, 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 you are just favored for nothing? You, you think that you are just intelligent for nothing? You think you are just smart for nothing? You think that you have favor with people for nothing? Everything that God has given to you that is a plus, there is a purpose. If you're handsome, there's a purpose. You're beautiful, there's a purpose. And that purpose is greater than you. Somebody shout hallelujah. I want to say to you, that purpose is greater than you. There's a purpose greater than you. You must locate it. You must fulfill it in the name of Jesus. It's bigger than you. It's greater than you. You see, Joseph in his immaturity... Pastor, Pastor Soji, Joseph in his immaturity, he was having these dreams and visions of greatness. And he thought as a child that God was just elevating him above his brothers. God is too serious to give you, to make you to be prepared for nothing. So, anywhere you go to, suddenly just find that they move it to the front. Why? Why didn't you die in the accident where everybody died? Why? Do you know it took almost 13 years later in Genesis 47 that Joseph had matured now. He said, oh. So all of these things God took me through was for this great purpose. I want to say there's a purpose greater than you. And you will fulfill it in the name of Jesus. I said, there's a purpose greater. There's a purpose greater. There's a purpose greater. There's a purpose. If God suddenly gives you big money, there's a purpose behind it. He doesn't waste. Yeah. And that's why in Esther chapter 4 verse 13, you know, Mordecai looked at Esther and said, Esther, he said, Esther, you think all of that favor you had out of all the many, many beautiful women that went through that process and you were chosen. You think you are chosen for nothing? Who do you think you are? Why do you think this one favored you? That one favored you. He said, are you sure? Don't you know? that you are in the kingdom for such a time as this. In other words, all of that favor so that you can become queen of the most powerful man on the earth is for a time such as this. It's for a time such as this. And then he said something powerful. He said, if you refuse every advantage God has given to you. Every favor God has given to you. Every exposure. Every intelligence. Every beauty God has given to you. He said, you know what? He said, God will push you aside and God will locate somebody else. And that is a frightening thing about purpose. Because the purpose of God must always stand. Oh, it's a persistent purpose. I discovered a hey, Yahazela Broha is a persistent purpose of God. If you not do them, God will raise somebody else. But he will warn you many times. I've come to announce to you. Please look at purpose. You don't decide, you don't you don't decide it. You discover it. You don't decide it. He doesn't say, I like, I like to be a pilot. No. Mm -mm. I like to be a pastor. No. You what? Before you were born, there's a generational purpose. Locate it. Help me tell your neighbor, locate it. Help me tell your neighbor, locate it. Discover it. Discover it. Somebody shout hallelujah. And so, Abraham, our father in the faith, became one that was on the line with the generational purpose. 
Something God started with Adam and Eve. He went to Noah and then he came to him. This year, it has come to you in the name of Jesus. It's your turn. Let me tell your neighbor, it's your turn. It's your turn. That's why God gave us that word. It's your turn to begin to manifest your purpose on the earth. It's your turn. It's your turn. And like we began to say, the truth is that many times, the purpose of God upon our lives are massive because God does not do small things. There's somebody here in this Sunday. Many times, when you, you discover the purpose of God for your life, it is too big in many times. Eh? It's not possible. There are two things you need to know. Truly, without God, you can't do it. That's one. You will need God to do what he has called you to do. Number two, I've also found out that the purpose of God, Sister Debbie, cannot end with you. <laughs> you know, the time God began to speak to Abraham, Elder stand up. Do you know that it didn't end with Abraham? All you need to do, sir, is locate your own portion in it. And like, and like Paul, when you're done, you say, Lord, I have finished my own. Hand it over to Jojo or whoever God will raise. But don't let the largeness of the purpose keep you from fulfilling it. Begin to do it. Begin to do it. Let me also say this. It may not necessarily be that your purpose may be to start something new. It may not necessarily be that your purpose is to pioneer something. It may be that your purpose is to join something that God is already doing. Is somebody here? It's not everyone that will be a Joseph. Neither is everyone that will be a Daniel or an Esther. But you can locate your Joseph and say, this is the purpose of God. You can locate a Daniel and join. Somebody say Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So it's important that we know that if God is talking to us about Abraham, clearly he's talking about purpose. So this our year is also our year of purpose. Let me tell your neighbor it's our year of purpose. So, so this year, we must be able to locate what God is doing. What God is doing. What is our role? What is our part in what God is doing? Now the second thing, and I'll deal with that and then we can close. So the first thing is there's a generational purpose. The second one is that every time there's a purpose of God, then there's also a call. Is somebody here? Every time there's a purpose, there's also what? I want to be sure that you're here. Every time there's a purpose, there's also what? Okay, so God has something that he's doing. But God needs men to help him to do it. So what he does is that he calls men to do it. So we see in Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 that what does he do? He calls a man Abraham. So what we see in Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 4 is the call of Abraham. Because there's an existing purpose. Now let's look at Romans 8. I like that. Romans 8, 28. We're familiar with that. Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, 28. Quickly now. Romans 8, 28. Let's read together, please. One to go. Come on, everybody in the room. Let's read God's word. One to go. Whoa. And, and we know that God causes everything to work together. For the good of those who love God and are what? Are called. Not my message this morning. But I can tell you that if you're a person of purpose, the devil cannot mess with you. Is somebody here? If you're carrying purpose, you should not be afraid that when you enter into an air, air crash, it will crash. Airplane to crash. Is somebody here? You see, when I enter into a plane, I sleep. Why? Because I know I'm carrying purpose. Is somebody here? 
Because I know that oh, yeah, 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 that all things work together. I'm not afraid of your cause. I'm not afraid of your bad belly. You know why? Because I am carrying purpose. And because the purpose is greater by myself. Uh, yeah, the, Pastor Jemma was telling me the other day that when I traveled, you know, she was alone all at home huh, in a big house, alone. But she said to me that she realized that unlike before, when, you know, if I'm not around or I'm away, even when we're living in a smaller house, she had to call somebody from church to stay in the house. But now we live in a much bigger house and I traveled and said that one tinge of fear was not there. And she said, you know what, what God told her? That because she has risen in her apostolic ministry, she knows that there is nothing that can touch her even while I'm away. Is somebody here. Therefore, if you know you're carrying purpose, fear goes. I said fear goes. You see, but when you know you're not carrying purpose, anything makes you afraid. Is somebody here? Listen, by the way, I'm not just talking about being a pastor. I hope you know that. This whole thing about purpose, if you know there's an assignment and a mandate God has given to you, the late Philip Mokuga, I remember many years ago before he died, was preaching in Agora Hotel. Powerful man of God. He said, when people, when people enter car, they begin to say, let's first pray in the motor park. He said, he says, it's fear. He said, when he enters, no matter where he's traveling to, he enters the car, Cross leg. He said, why? He said, because he knows he's carrying purpose. If you know that the reason you are alive is bigger than you, you are not afraid of certain things. So discover purpose in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, I will discover purpose this year in the name of Jesus. And so we, we, we see that there's something called, called according to purpose. Called what? Uh, yeah. There's something called what? Called according to purpose. How many of you here know that you're called according to purpose? Just wave your hand. Called. Called. Abraham, Abraham. Called. The Bible records that God went to the house of Eli. And the Bible records that God said somewhere, Samuel. Uh, yeah. Somewhere, somewhere, sir, he jumped up, ran to Eli. He said, Eli, sir, you're calling me. He said, no, no, I didn't call you. He went back to sleep again. Let me use you, sir. Thompson, Thompson. That's the call of God. Somewhere ran again to Eli. He said, sir, you're calling me. He said, no, I didn't call you. And the Bible realized, said that Eli realized that God was calling the young man. He said, he said he realized that he was hearing the call of God. He said, Samuel, he said, when you hear it again, say, answer, say, Lord, I'm here. Thank you, Jesus. Now, your, your call may not be that dramatic. Your call may not be that dramatic. But I want to say to you that every one of you that is here, there's a call of God upon you. You must answer in the name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus. You will hear that call. And may you answer in the name of Jesus. You know, one of the things that really blesses me about this elder, he doesn't know it, but you know, a lot of times on Wednesday, people come here to come and testify and say, I was in prison. I was in jail. Oh, come on, Tioji. Those of you come on Wednesday, repeatedly Wednesday after Wednesday sometimes you're not even here but people will come and say I was in prison um, but there's a man his name is Emmanuel Form his name is Pastor Form while I was in prison oh I didn't think there was hope but a man called Emmanuel Form he comes to the prison he ministers to us he prays for us he gives us hope a man came here last Wednesday I don't know if he's here is he here this Sunday is the man here this Sunday an elderly man. He's been in prison for 15 years. You know him, sir. He came here last Wednesday or two Wednesdays ago, sorry. And he began to testify. He said, There's, a, there's a somebody in this church. He comes to the prison and it looks like my life is done. But you know what? He gave us hope and he prayed, and I'm free. Elder Form. Oh, yeah, Hazaya. You're fulfilling purpose. All those governors who are there in prison. You take this devotional to them. Every time they read one sentence there, it ministers to them. You are fulfilling purpose. Can we appreciate it?
Because the call of God upon your life has to be more than you. It has to be go beyond you and your, ch and your children and your family. It has because the reason God calls you to call you to minister to somebody else. And so if all you're doing this year is really about yourself, you have not heard the call yet. You have not heard the call yet. You have not heard the call yet. But you know because we're sons and daughters of God, let me just quickly look at our first, uh, first, first Peter chapter 2 verse 9. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. Because the call of God also means that God has chosen us. We are not, we are not ordinary. Why would God pick Abraham of all the people in all the Chaldees? Of all the people in Haran, why would God choose this man? Why would God pick a Mary? Is somebody here? Why would God pick a Mary? Mary to carry his son. Why? Let's look at first. First. Korea, first Peter. Can we do it together now? But you are a chosen generation. Please leave it there. But you are a chosen generation. I need you to walk in the consciousness of this scripture. We don't read the scripture anymore in the 21st century church. Because all we're looking for is breakthrough and blessing. Pastor, come and pray for me. Do you know that you are chosen? You see, when you realize, leave that scripture. When you realize that you are chosen, your choices become different. I'm going to say that again. The moment God says, no, not you, not you, not you, not you, not you, yes, you. Then, Pastor Wally, a chosen person now makes different choices. You cannot do what everybody else is doing. Why? Because God's hand is now upon you. But you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. It, it shocks me when I hear what Christians do now. And it's normal. You can't dress the way they dress. You can't talk the way they talk. You can't live the way they live. Because God has chosen you. Put it back. Put it back, please. Put it back. Put it back. A holy nation. His own special people. That you may proclaim the praises of him who did what? Called you out of darkness. There's something God has called you out of. If God has called you out of it, come out of it. If God has called you out of sin, come out of it. I'm talking to somebody this, this morning. Come out of that thing. He called you out of it. Called you out of gossip. Called you out of all the rubbish you were involved in. He called you out. He called you out. And as I, please, as, as I begin to close and close this morning. Why does God call specific people? Why did he call Abraham? Why did he call Noah? Why did he call Samuel? Why did he choose Esther? The truth is that We may never fully understand why God says not you, not you, not you, not you, you. Please come, sir. In God's sovereignty, sovereignty means that God can do anything he wants to do. He doesn't report to any man. Hmm? He, he doesn't seek any permission. You see, because if, if you was to ask my permission about this man, I may say, no, don't choose him. But he won't ask me. He won't ask me. He decides because he's God all by himself. And I want to say, I don't know why he chose you, but he chose you, my brother. I don't know why he chose you, but he chose you, my sister. I don't know. 
I don't know. We, we, we are not here to question him. And that's why on, on Wednesday we looked at the scripture. Romans and we're closing now. Romans chapter 9 verse 11. Romans chapter 9 verse 11. Romans chapter 9 verse 11. <laughs> Thank you Holy Spirit. Why did he choose Abraham? I don't know. But he chose him. <laughs> for, for the children. Not yet been born. Oh Jesus. Not having done any good or evil. Did you see that? It's not that after we have a grown mustache and beer beer, that's when God is choosing. No, sir. No, ma. Before your legs were formed in your mother's womb, you were chosen. He said, before they even did anything, that the purpose of God, according to election, <laughs> I told them on Wednesday, you think INEC was the first that started the election? Are you here today? God has been doing elections since so. The only thing is that he's the only one who does the election. He has no national commissioners. There are no recs. There are no resident electoral commissioners. Naim alone be I next. Somebody shout hallelujah. And that's why nobody can rig his election over your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. Can you stand up this Sunday morning? I say anything concerning you. Nobody can rig it. Listen, eh? APC may rig, eh? but concerning your life and your destiny, no man can rig. He cannot be bribed. He cannot be bribed, and he, he cannot be bribed. He's all by himself, Einek. That the purpose of God according to election might stand. Might stand. But I know as we close this morning, that there are certain things that God knows about us even before. We even know it about ourselves. And so when we look at the, a person like Mary, when the angel came and spoke, before that time we didn't know anything about her. But Pastor Nyema, when we began to see the scriptures, Mary began to reel out. In Luke chapter 2. Ministers, we now know that that, that choice wasn't at random. Quoting several scriptures, a 15 year old girl reeling out so many scriptures. So the election wasn't random. So there are issues of character. Yes, before they were born, God knew that if He let the mantle fall upon Esau, Esau had no character. So, what is Pastor saying? There's a reason why God called you. There are certain character traits about you. There are certain things about you where God called you. Let me, be, as, we, as we close this morning, I want to find that, that reason. Only. And please maintain it. Because though the callings of God are without repentance. Okay? I was talking to Pastor Nyema some days ago. The gifts and callings of God are what? It is true to some extent. But if God has called you, and one, you refuse consistently to fulfill the call. Two, if repeatedly you are abusing the grace of that call, a day comes, minister, <laughs> minister, Ayo, a day comes, the Bible says that even though Israel was called, Israel kept on misbehaving, misbehaving, and the Bible says God cut them off. And then look for people like us and engrafted us. May God, may God not say, I am tired of you. This year, may God never say, I'm tired of you. In the name of Jesus, may God not cut you off in the name of Jesus. May we not frustrate the call of God upon our lives. May we not frustrate the call of God. May sin not mess, up, mess us up. May laziness, may laziness, may indolence, may not cut off us from that call. This year in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, I will press into the call. I will press into the call. Somebody say, I will press into the call. This year I will press in 
The Bible says in verse 4 of chapter 12, and Abraham departed. I pray that this year, the obedience to do what God has called us to do, it comes upon us in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah this Sunday. Come on, can you lift up your voice and pray? I say, Father, thank you because uh, I know there's a purpose that I carry. Help me to discover it this year. And Lord, if I've discovered it, uh, help me to come into dimensions uh, that I've never experienced. Uh, dimensions of that call. Uh, dimensions of that purpose. Uh, Lord, I know that if you called Abraham, uh, you called me as well. Uh, because I am the seed of Abraham. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Masema uh, lebrokasu. And Marcel Bruce, are the same way you called Abraham according to purpose. Lord, I know that I'm called according to purpose. And therefore, my father, help me to respond to that call. Help me to answer to that call. Help me to know that my life is not just about ordinary existence, just surviving Abuja. Lord, there's a bigger purpose. There's a bigger reason. The gifts you have given to me, the graces, are the many blessings. There's a reason. There's a reason. Help me to obey the call. Help me to press into the call this year. In the mighty name of Jesus. Please, please be seated and bow down your heads. You know, this Sunday, I want to pray for a special group of people. You know, as I spoke this morning, you're saying, Pastor. I want you to pray for me, Pastor. This message is touching me. But, but I don't have a relationship with God. So I'm not even sure if I can hear his voice. I'm not even sure that what I hear is the voice of God. Or Pastor, I want to do the will of God. But there are too many issues. Too many weaknesses. Too many distractions. Too many things beyond me. Or Pastor, as you spoke this morning, I can see a pattern in my family. Pastor, help me to pray this morning. I don't want my children to begin to go through what I'm going through too. Or for somebody here, your children even looks like they're going through it already. Our time is far gone. Why every head is bowed or, eye, or eyes are closed. He said, Pastor, pray for me. Lift up your hands this morning. I'm going to pray with you. Just lift up your hands this morning. I'm going to pray with you. I can see that hand. Just lift up your hands boldly if you're risen. If you're raising up your hand, I can see that hand over that place. Don't be ashamed. That's why God brought you to church this morning. Now listen to me. If your hands are raised up, I want you to take your Bible and your bag. Come to this altar. We want to pray for you. Quickly come. Let's appreciate them as they come. Let's, let's, let's appreciate them as they come. Mama Mazule prays. God bless you, sir. Come. Mama, he's here. Mama, lebro, lebo, mama. Maybe you didn't raise up your hand, but you need to come to the altar. Quickly come. Quickly come. Quickly come. Quickly come. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Mama Mazole Pro Jose Mazaya. Quick come. Thank you, Jesus. If you're coming quickly, run, run, run. There's no time. Come, come. Hallelujah. Quickly come, quickly come, quickly come, quickly come. I'm not going to assume that you already know Christ. So Neil, just repeat this prayer after me. Say, my dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing me to church this morning to hear your word. I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die for me. This Sunday, I received Jesus Christ into my heart as my Lord, as my master, as my savior. Say, Satan, I break my relationship with you. I will no longer follow you. I will no longer obey you. So this Sunday, I break every relationship I have with you. Thank you, Father, for receiving me into your family. Say in Jesus' name, say amen. Now I'm going to pray for you, Father, in the name that is above every name, in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for these ones that you have drawn to yourself this morning. No man comes to you except you first draw them to yourself. And your word says, for as many as will come to you, sir, by no means cast away. And therefore, thank you for bringing these ones into your family this Sunday. And therefore, Lord, in the name that is above every name, in the name of Jesus, 
we break every satanic demonic power over their lives in the name of jesus every influence of hell and of darkness it is broken in the name of jesus every satanic demonic influence whatever is not of you lord let it be broken in the name of jesus whatever is in their bloodline lord that is not of you it is broken on this altar this sunday in the name of jesus we release them into the liberty that only christ alone himself can give let a new day begin let a new season begin in their lives and in their bloodline in the name of jesus thank you because praise and we give you glory in jesus mighty name we have prayed and the church says what amen please stand up god bless you congratulations welcome into the house of god please just go with our sister over there just for a few minutes go take your details and then they can release you back can we appreciate god for them this sunday morning hallelujah hallelujah i just want to say to you this sunday as we prepare to take our our offering and our tithes this morning this year that god is saying is our crossover here every and anything that is coming behind you from your parents it is broken this year in the name of jesus God is causing you to cross over. Everything your parents couldn't cross over. You this year will cross over it in the name of Jesus. And we release also upon your children that your children will be greater than you in the name of Jesus. No matter how young, no matter how old, they will, they will be greater than you in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to receive our tithes this morning. Uh, if you're giving your tithes, quickly come forward. We'll receive your tithes this morning. You know, the Bible records that when Abraham wanted to get a wife for his son Isaac, he sent Eliezer, his most trusted servant, to go and get a wife. You know the story. And Eliezer prayed a simple prayer. He took ten camels loaded with the blessings of Abraham. And he said, any young lady who will come here, not only will give me water, but will water my camels. I will know that God has chosen that one. I will know this story. Rebecca, pretty, pretty girl. She came to fetch water and she saw this man with ten camels. And the Bible records that she began to not only water the man, but water his camels. And she didn't know that those camels she was watering, the things the camels were carrying, eventually became hers. Every time you, you give into God's work, you're watering yourself. Every time you give to the kingdom, Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You don't know that every time you give your tithe to God and you give your offering to God, you are, what, what, what the house is carrying will come upon you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Can you just lift up your tithe this morning? Father, in the name that is above every name, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, behold these ones who have come in obedience to bring ten out of the, what you have blessed them with. We ask, O oh Lord, that you receive it from their hands in the name of Jesus. And let now the blessings of the tithe Lord, that is in Malachi, and indeed that is in Genesis concerning Abraham. Let it come upon these ones and their households in the name of Jesus. And let the blessing of the tithe, let it come upon the work of their hands in the name of Jesus. Let this city answer to you because of your tithe in the name of Jesus. Let the nations of the earth answer to you because of this tithe. I declare that let doors open to you. Let incredible favors begin to speak on your behalf because of this obedience in the name of Jesus. We give you praise and we give you glory, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. You can drop it on the altar. Father, we bless. Okay, there's no, there's no communion now. Lave Mosiah. Can everybody please stand with your offering? Lave ho lebro kazaya. Maze lebro jose mama zala. Lebro jose mama kulebrosa. Labre ho lebro jose mama zulia. Riyama le jose mama zaya. You want to take your offerings and just wave them before the Lord. Father Lord, we have not come before you empty handed. We've come in obedience of your word. And Lord, we thank you because uh, we have also have not brought that which has not cost us, uh, which has cost us something. And we ask, oh Lord, let our offerings this Sunday be acceptable in your sight in the name of Jesus. And we ask, oh Lord, that for every seed there's a harvest. And therefore we speak the harvest attached to every seed here. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let the harvest, oh Lord, uh, let it come upon us this week in the name of Jesus. Let the harvest come upon us this week in the name. Lord, provoke the harvest this week. We give you praise and we give you glory, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Can we just rejoice as we give to the Lord this Sunday? Say, everybody look, look, see what the Lord has done for me. Everybody look, look, 
your first time of coming to our church, I want to shake your hands and leave a blessing with you as you go into the week. So please come, just come to the front. I want to shake your hands and leave a blessing. Your first time of coming to our church. Quickly come. Just quickly come. Yeah. 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 We declare that you are blessed. What you've heard this Sunday and what you hear in subsequent Sundays, it's God's message to you. Okay, I just want to encourage you. It's not the hearers of the word that are blessed, but the believers and the doers of the word that are blessed. It's your crossover here in the name of Jesus. 